CataractCoach.com. UV to cataract with Sonique. We got to lice the Sonique and expand the pupil before we can do the cataract surgery. Our guest is Dr. Erico June Oda from Brazil. We've sped up the video, so don't worry about that. We just want to get through the whole thing in a timely manner for you guys. So making the two incisions here, um, getting inside there, there's the phaco incision, and there's the parrot about 90 degrees apart. And tripent blue dye is put in here, but it may not have stained under the iris. So keep that in mind here. You may only get central staining. You need to make sure the dye gets under the iris, because when you expand the pupil, you have a little bit more staining. So here's the viscoelastic going inside the eye. You can see this patient had a history of bad uveitis, which has been quiescent now. Coating the cornea with hydroxypropyl methylcellulose, HPMC, and now using a couple of choppers here to break the sneaky carefully. There we go, and you'll expand the pupil. Now again, you may not have got a sufficient degree of capsule staining underneath the iris. Kind of just depends on how much uh, tripan blue dye you put and the direction in which you injected it. But just expanding the pupil, breaking the sneaky, and the keys here are just taking your time. Now again, we did speed up the video, so don't worry about that. But you get the idea, and you can see the extensive sneaky here. You really want to fully separate the iris from any adhesions to the anterior lens capsule. And this takes some time and careful dissection. And don't be too rough. You can actually damage the iris. So we want to be very careful here. Get that expanded. That looks great. You can see the pupil naturally wants to expand. Once you break the adhesions, it wants to expand more. So now he's doing a little pupil stretch there in a couple different quadrants. Now that's a very reasonable pupil. More viscoelastic can go in. Get that nice and expanded. And that looks pretty reasonable. Now I can get a rexus done. And let's see how much staining you got. Yeah, so again, it's very light staining on the tripan. So you may have had a better uh, stain if you put the tripan underneath the iris and also left it in the eye for a little bit longer. So getting a rexus done, a little bit on the small side there, especially uh, on the top of your screen, which is the patient's inferior. But I think that should be sufficient. It looks like a relatively soft nucleus. And let's see how that goes. So a little higher dissection. It looks like a softer nucleus in a younger patient. So this should aspirate out pretty easily despite the rexus being a little on the small side. You kind of want to have also a good-sized rexus because that'll help prevent adhesions or sneaky in the post-op period. Remember, the iris will easily stick to a anterior lens capsule, but the iris doesn't adhere so well to our typical hydrophobic acrylic IOLs. So here now it's using an aspiration and a little, maybe a little bit of chop, but not even much. This nucleus comes out pretty easy. Again, not super dense. That wasn't the challenge in this case. The challenge, of course, was getting that pupil expanded, the sneaky lysed, and the rex is done. So cleaning up here looks pretty good. You really want to do your best to clean out as much of that lens material as possible. This patient, you want to have very quiet in the post-op period. You don't want to have a big inflammatory response. If you leave cortex in the eye, it can cause a lot of inflammation. So really try your best to clean up the caps or bag as much as you can. Now, there's also a role of giving the patient steroids. Some people even get systemic steroids, IV or by mouth. But I think in this case, putting triamcinol on the AC is a big help. You can also put subconjunctival um, steroids. You can put some subtenon um, triamcinol on. You could put subconjunctival dexamethasone. All these things are very appropriate choice. And of course, you'll give topical steroids as well, either diflupredinate or prednisolone acetate in the post-op period. But it's really important to get that eye quiet, get the inflammation controlled. And I see there's some staining of the capsule there, that whitish haze. Sometimes you're not going to be able to get that completely off. And so you can try your best, but sometimes these type of white cataracts do end up staining the capsule and causing these fibrotic areas. So he's going to try to peel some of it off. You got to be very careful. Again, you can easily disinsert the iris, so do this very cautiously. And that looks pretty good. Here comes the lens now, putting it in the capsule bag. Let's see, it looks like an acrylic lens. Oh, I wish that leading haptic was folded better. Ooh. A leading haptic needs to be straightened out a little bit. Okay, good, good move. I double checked that though, it makes me a little nervous. So, in this case, I wish the technician or whoever loaded the lens would have done a little bit better job. In a case like this with a smaller pupil, you really want that lens to go in the capsule bag very smoothly. You cannot risk in this eye having one haptic in the sulcus, that would be catastrophic. So, cleaning this up, and remember, there's a balance here going under the lens, getting the viscoelastic up, that's great. 
But don't keep tugging on the iris. Any little strands there of the iris don't work. The pupil looks a little irregular. It'll all be reasonable in the post-op period, I assure you. So don't be too much of a perfectionist here. You know, remember the, the balance. Sometimes perfect is the enemy of a very good result. You don't want to avoid any kind of complications. So now sealing up the incisions here. And let's make sure that lens goes a little bit deeper in the bag. That one edge of the optic looks like it's tilted up to me a little bit. I don't like that. I want that a little bit down more. And yeah, the patient's all over the place. In a case like this, if the patient really can't cooperate and you can't give enough systemic sedation, please give the patient a block. A retrobarbar block will make everyone happier, including you. So hydrating it up a little bit. Make sure there's no that iris pigment leaking around. And that looks pretty good. Good position. Let's see the post-op pictures. I think he had those forwarded as well. And the patient had a pretty nice result. But watch carefully in the post-op period for rebound inflammation. You want to make sure that's not going to be an issue. There it is, post-op period. You can see the pupil looks a lot better than you thought. A lot more reasonable. still actually reacts even. Hey, that's a beautiful result. So thank you, Dr. Eric Oda, for sharing this very interesting cataract case. Thanks for watching these videos. Be sure to check out the website too cataractcoach.com. You'll get the full text and the graphics and the photos plus the videos. And if you sign up for a free daily email, we'll send all of that to you in your inbox every day for free. Come on. cataractcoach.com. Check it out.